So I just folded. Uh, next hand, uh, Natty Nora decides to fold as well. Uh, I had a6, that's that's fine. Um, then I go back to raising my queen six of clubs. I think it's pretty standard to be raising a very wide range. Um, standard fold with 510 there. Okay, I raise my queen four. Um, and I get called. Uh, we flop top pair. It's a pretty good flop for us. Uh, Natty Nora decides to check. And I actually decide to check back on this flop. Now, the reason why I decided to check back is because I'm pretty happy with the strength of my hand having top pair, but my kicker is pretty poor here. Now, there are a bunch of draws out there, so I'm checking back, hoping that the, the turn peels off as like a dry turn card. Um, and the reason for that is because I feel that if, if I go ahead and C-bet uh, with, with this kind of hand, because I'm, I'm still pretty marginal with, due to my kicker, because my kicker is pretty marginal and that really decreases the strength of my hand, I don't really want to face a check raise here. Um, obviously, I feel that Natty Nora could be check raising, obviously, top pair or better. Um, but she could also be uh, check raising some flush draws, some straight draws. Um, and I think that's going to make me a little uncomfortable if I go ahead and see bet and get check raised. Because then even if I call and she leads a, a brick turn, I'm pretty much going to have to make a decision for my whole stack right, right there on the turn. Um, and that's really not something I'm, I'm hoping for at this point with this kind of a hand. So I just had to check back. Uh, I get a very good turn card, actually. Um, the only hand that really improved here is like 8-9. And uh, so I just go ahead um, and just flat call her bet when she decides to lead. Now, again, the same reason for me here is like I really don't see the need for me to check. Uh, sorry, I don't really feel, see the need for me to go ahead and raise here. Um, I don't want to raise out any draws that potentially miss the river and decide to double barrel bluff me here. Um, and I just don't think that I'm going to get value out of worse hands by making a raise. Like if he has a seven, uh, a pair of sevens or even a pair of tens here, if I make a raise, I don't want him to fold out. Um, these kind of hands because I'm hoping that even if a dry river hits, Natty Nora's in a check, I'm going to bet the river and I'll get another street of value that way. So I decided just decide to flat. And I get an, a good river uh, here as well. Make two pair, Natty Nora checks. Now, my decision is here is to either check it back, which I think is not the best option. Obviously, we have two pair. Even if we're beat, we can bet and then fold to a raise because we can assume that Natty Nora is going to be raising probably hands that have me beat at this point. So I'm going to just probably bet fold this river. Now the decision is how much to bet here. Um, I actually decided to go with a pretty large amount. I bet 245 uh, because I feel that my hand, the way, the way I played it, really reps a missed draw. Um, I just flatted, uh, sorry, I checked back the flop. So that definitely shows some weakness. And I just called the turn. And on the turn, there are like sick amount of, of draws out there. There's straight draws, there's flush draws. There's two flush draws actually. So by just flatting the turn after I check the flop, like I said, I think I look pretty weak, and I think that um, I can easily rep a missed draw here by betting the river, um, and I think I get looked up pretty light. Um, so I just have to make a big bet again, just to make it look like I'm bluffing and to add to that uh, image that I'm uh, I'm on a, a missed draw. But unfortunately, Natty Nora, Natty Nora folds. Um, but I think this is a good example of a different way to play your hand rather than just going ahead and see betting your top pair for the reasons I explained. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't get the value I wanted on the river. Um, but I think uh, I think it was a decent uh, thought process behind the hand. So I just fold six nine. Again, raise pretty much any two cards. Yeah, I raise six three. I actually missed this flop. Natty Nora checks. And I just go ahead and make a C bet. Uh, pretty standard sizing here, and I get a fold. Uh, so that was very nice. I just fold my four eight to a raise. Raise my pocket threes. Get a fold. Raise queen seven, uh, sorry, oh, I get raised and I have queen seven in the big line. I actually go ahead and three bet, which is not necessarily s standard uh, of me. Uh, we've been through 15 hands and I have been three bet once. Uh, Natty Nora also has a very high preflop raise uh, frequency as we can see in this video. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I just went ahead and probably said I'm going to three bet a very wide range here to see uh, what Natty Nora does. I can assume that based on the style and the game flow at this point, she's going to be, or he's going to be, um, a pretty loose preflop with the preflop raises, but I think pretty tight to three bets. So that's probably why I went ahead and made a three bet here. Again, if you if you feel that your opponent can fold a very, very wide range here, then you can go ahead and th three bet pretty wide. Um, obviously, you don't have to do it too frequently. I'm, I'm playing this based on game flow and based on my image here. Um, it is a small sample. It was only 15 hands, so I don't have to be going ahead and saying I have to three bet. I have to three bet because I haven't three bet in the first 15 hands. No, um, but it is something you can consider that 
your three bit is going to look a little stronger since it is your first one in the first 15 hands. So I do get a fold, which is pretty happy, which made me pretty happy. Um, I raise king, queen of diamonds, super standard. I get a call. Um, I get a, a flop that is not terrible. Obviously, I flop two over cards and a gut shot. Um, but I just go ahead and check this back. Um, I believe prior history that I had with Maddie Nora, I was check raised on a few of these similar boards. Um, and I did call with a hand similar to this, like a, a semi float with my over cards and my gut shot. Um, and I got a barrel on the turn, um, pretty large amount. So I just go ahead um, and fold the turn when I miss. Um, so in, in this spot, I just decided to check it back, try to get a free card to improve um, rather than going to C bet and, and taking a chance of getting three uh, check raise on this flop. And then she leads out for a, a decent amount, but it does look like a value amount to me. Um, so I'm just going to go and fold. Um, if I had a heart in my hand, I might consider making some kind of a play. Um, but with just diamonds and not really enough outs, um, considering that any, any, any of my outs that are in hearts are not in good outs, um, I'm just going to go ahead and fold. So I'm just going to flat my ace-3 to a raise here. And I flop trips. Great flop for me. And I, I'm pretty happy how this hand was played out, actually. Because I go ahead and lead out here. Now, I don't really think that that's something the standard that people do. And it's because people are saying, like, why are you going to lead out here when you flop like the nuts? Um, your opponent's going to see bet a ton, and you're going to be able to get more value that way. Um, you don't really want to bet and have them fold. Exactly. And that's exactly why I bet here. Because I just don't think that a lot of people are going to put me on trips with an ace kicker at all when I go ahead and lead. And I think someone like Natty Nora is going to consider that, and she's going to probably think, like, okay, there's no way he's leading with trips. I think that's going to allow me to stack a pair of sixes. I think that's going to induce uh, her playing uh, her flush draw extremely aggressive or much more aggressive. And it's also going to induce her to float me pretty wide just because she doesn't really think I have anything. It's also a very dry flop, so it's very likely that I go ahead and stab to, to steal. So I do, in fact, get a call. So that, again, makes me pretty happy. Turns a brick, which is awesome. And I go ahead and bet again a pretty large size. Uh, again, just making it look like I'm uh, see, uh, like bluffing on the flop and barreling the turn. Uh, that's why I make my amount much bigger rather than making it small. I don't want it to seem like value at all. And I do get another call. And the river's a jack of clubs. Now, what this does is that it fills up uh, flush draw. She was chasing me with a flush draw. And it also uh, allows her to give me less credit for having a hand just because, like, if she has ace high here, it's going to be super easy for her to call um, a river bet just because she's like, okay, he just doesn't have anything. We're going to split this pot. And, um, and it's going to be pretty easy for her to call. So what I decided to do here is I overbet shove um, the river um, simply because, like I said, um, I don't think she's going to give me credit for having a hand. I don't think she'll, she'll consider uh, that I'll play this hand this way uh, if I had uh, a full house here. And I think I get looked up pretty light. Like if she has a six, I think she'll still call. She'll probably say I got a better two pair here. Ace high might call as well. And same thing with that flush draw. If the flush draw completed the flush, I think she'll go ahead and call as well saying... Um, Unlikely I have uh, a three here, unlikely I have a jack here, and uh, just go ahead and uh, assume that my pair of, let's say, two pair of sixes and jacks, uh, or my flush is in fact good. So I actually took a pretty different line to play in this hand, which is definitely not standard that people don't tend to always do. Um, so that's uh, that's just different ways of playing it, and I think my thought process justifies um, what I did. Unfortunately, I got a fold here, but I think I'm pretty happy in how I play that hand and how different of a line I took rather than just going for a standard uh, let's say kind of a check call or a check raise on the flop. And I'm going to keep putting pressure on my opponent uh, now that she's stored a short stack. She just lost a big pot, so I think she's going to be folding a lot of uh, big blinds here when I raise. Um, unfortunately, I get shoved on, but that could just easily fold, so that's fine too. And I'm going to just keep putting pressure on her um, when she's short on chips here with these blinds getting big. But I'm still going to play within uh, my limits and still within my, my, my strategy there. I'm not going to really go crazy with with um, with ace. Well, with ace eight here, I'm raising and actually calling a shove if she planned on shoving. And this is the hand I'm talking about. I'm not going to go crazy with king three. I'm not going to, say, three bet shove here for, like, 20 big blinds. Um, so, yeah. And then we pick up ace ten. We raise with the intention of calling a shove. She shoves or he shoves. And we get it in ahead. And hopefully we hold... And we flop an ace, which is glorious, and we just have to hold against the king, turns a brick, and the river's a brick as well. And that's how it's done. So I hope you enjoyed my um, hand history review slash video, leak finder, whatever you want to call it. Um, feel free to message me any questions that you may have about the video. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to contact me pretty much about anything. If you want some coaching as well, I'll be glad to help you out. 
Um, I wish you all the best. Good luck.